What's going on everybody? Hope you're having an amazing day. My name is Anomaly. Check out my website at legendary.vision. Follow me on Instagram at dreamrare. Follow me on Twitter at Legendary Energy, and of course, stay tuned on Facebook for more live streams and comprehensive videos. I'm going to drop my link at the end if you'd like to donate or check the top of my page. But this video is specifically for something that's been on my mind over the past couple years, and we saw, especially with this presidential election, which is polls and the accuracy of polls. And I've been thinking this for a while, and I've been researching deeper, deeper, watching what's happening on the news, on the internet, and whatnot. So I wanted to make this video to explain why I don't trust or believe any poll, almost any poll. Um, and that's be for multiple reasons, and I'm going to say that here. First of all, with the political polls, the stuff that we saw you know, during the election, like Donald Trump has a 99% chance of losing. I believe all of these websites said it, all of these universities said it, and it turned out to be wrong. It's no surprise because pretty much every poll is in some essence fake. and one way that I noticed that they faked it was during the primaries when it was Bernie Sanders versus Hillary Clinton. What they would do was they wouldn't poll people that were 18 to 24 because they knew Bernie Sanders was high in that region. So they would poll people above and even if Bernie came out on top and they wanted it of course to be Hillary, as I say all the time, a lot of these big, the biggest um, news websites are just PR teams for Hillary Clinton. So they would skew the data so they'd only poll certain people that fit their data and then if they still lost in that poll they wouldn't show it so they would publish the poll it would happen but they wouldn't advertise it so it's, it's the same thing like when they lie and push out fake news stories what they do is the lie gets you know millions of shares but then when they retract the fake news story they don't publish it they're like you know under wraps about it and also when you see polls um you have to think about this question. How many people are they polling? How are they polling? Are they polling by email? Are they polling by cell phone, by, by landline? Are they polling you know, based on a study group? How many people is in that poll? And how many people is it supposed to represent? Nothing about polls makes sense to me. I know data is different. Data is very powerful. Having people's names, phone numbers, email address, uh, consumer purchases, what they're uh, researching. Facebook, Google, Amazon, these websites have data. Data is very, very powerful, and I would never talk about data in any other way because that type of stuff can lead to real research and whatnot. But as far as polls, they're almost all fake. I mean, what did they poll? Uh, 10,000 people or 1,000 people? And then how did they poll them? Are they calling them? Are they in a study group? How do they know that these people are even telling the truth? First of all, they're not just there for the money or a quick hit a few buttons and cancel out. So then they take all of this poll, the, these 10,000 people's opinions, and then they make it sound like, oh, well, this is how 3 million, 300 million people feel. There's no way that that study group of 10,000 people can properly represent the entire United States of 300, 320 million, etc. What these applications do, if you notice, a lot of applications, if you delete them on your phone, they ask you a few questions. They say, why'd you delete the app? Why Are you happy with our services? You know, if you call Time Warner or any of the big companies, they ask you to take a little survey all the time. I never, I can't think of one time where I actually took the survey when it, they forced me to take a survey. I can't even think of one time where I actually took the survey and took the time to fill out exactly why I wasn't happy with the service, why I was. I just click the buttons as fast as I possibly can to get off the phone so I could delete the app or get out get out of the phone call. I've never once given accurate information because I don't like to be hassled with polls. So then they, they take this data and then they go to their business meetings and they opt out professional like millennials think this way and you know an anomaly thinks this way and this people think this way. No, they're just trying to get out of your face because you already give us terrible service and we just want you to leave us alone. So all of these, you know, when you delete an app and it says why did you delete the app, I guarantee you my poll, which is inaccurate too, but just off the top of my head, probably seven or eight out of ten of people don't click the right thing. They just click to get out of the app or get out of the phone call. And then you turn around and take this data to business meetings, acting like you have the multi million dollar uh, poll research. Oh my goodness, you know, I know exactly why people deleted this app. Let's, uh, we got to make the new app different because this is how people feel. No, that's not specifically how everybody feels. And even if you do the best possible poll, you have the best possible research, you have the best possible study group, you're taking a small number of people and you're applying it to a large number of people, it's not going to always reign true. And in a large portion of uh, a large 
amount of the time, it's not even remotely true. As we've seen with this election, almost every single poll said that Donald Trump had no way of winning. Almost every single poll said this and that. It's because the multiple reasons I just explained. One, to begin with, if it's political, they're already skewing it in their direction as they do with even their data. You know, they've been caught skewing and deleting data if it doesn't apply with what the message that they're trying to convey. So first you have them skewing the data. So polling certain people, not showing certain data. Then you have the fact that how are they polling people? You know, website, phone, computer. Are people really telling the truth or are they just rushing through? Even if it's a sit down survey where you pay people a couple hundred dollars to take the survey. I've been to one of those study groups before. I mean, personally, I told the truth for the most part, but most people there are just trying to be there for the money, like, okay, two, three hours, talk about this video game, whatever, $300, and I leave. It's not the all being researched, like, oh my goodness, I know how everybody feels now because I sat down with 20 or 100 kids. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, the fact that these companies think that these polls and, and these politicians and these news organizations, they think that their polls are accurate representations of you know, the entire world of men, of women, of Latinos, of this and that. You know, they got a poll for everything, but all their polls are very foolish. I've worked for multi-million dollar advertising agencies and, you know, I, I don't want to disclose exactly who I worked for. Respect to that, but I watched how they crunched this data and did all these polls and stuff and it's like they had no idea what they were doing. They had no idea what they were talking about. They were like, oh, millennials feel this way. Oh, these like millennials feel this way. These type of people feel this way. And all, all they had was a bunch of skewed polls that made absolutely no sense. And you had a bunch of, you know, no offense, but 40, 50, and 60 year olds trying to act like they knew how 18 and 19 year olds felt. And they were so out of touch. That's not how you learn. You know, there's other ways. There's other ways to get proper data and proper polling. But I just want to make this video real quick to explain why I don't believe any single poll for the reasons that I said there. First of all, they skew the data, you know, they, they cut out certain age groups if they know it's not going to play in their benefit. Second of all, how are they polling people? You know, phone, email, by mail, you know, uh, when you delete an app, just click a few buttons. And then third, how big is the sample size? Even if you get all of those things right, which you probably won't, like I just said, now you have a small sample size, 100 people, 1,000 people, 10,000 people, and then you're trying to spread it and make it seem like these inaccurate answers portray you know hundreds of millions of people I think polling is ridiculous that's why you saw it completely fail this election and anytime I see it in an article you know I'm very skeptical no matter what it is whether it feeds into my narrative or not in the sense of oh you know these people feel this way these people feel that way this feels that way these people feel that way even if I agree with the article I'm not necessary to jump on it and that's why a lot of people say well why don't you use that many stats this and that most stats are extremely extremely skewed I mean of course there's some great research studies I'm not knocking people who do it but how can you take a small sample size and act like you know what everybody's thinking it's virtually impossible if you say 75 percent of Americans feel this way 50 percent of Americans feel this way there's no possible way that you asked every single American in the proper setting where they gave the proper answer there's no way at best, your sample size is like one a hundredth of what the whole study group really is. So I think polling is ridiculous. And I know people do it so then they can write an article and say, well, ha, huh, I got it. I got these people. The Americans feel this way. You know, the Asians feel this way. The Latinos feel this way. And I think it's pretty ridiculous. I think we'd learn a lot more about each other, you know, if we had conversations, if we talked to each other and really went in instead of just trying to manipulate a bunch of data saying, oh, this is how people must feel because they, you know, took my quick survey and I, I think that they're giving accurate answers. That's just my opinion on it. You know, I think data, as I said, is very important. Data being people's name, their phone numbers, their address, their email address, uh, you know, their consumer purchases, what they're searching. Websites like Facebook and Google already have that. I mean, you probably don't realize when you read it in the terms and conditions, but and I don't even know if it's legal or not, but between Facebook, Google, Amazon, Twitter, they're sharing information to the point where I've had points in my life where they're advertising things to me that I'm thinking that I've never even searched. Maybe I said, I mean, they're recording our, our, our messages. They're, they're listening in on our conversations. They're looking at what we searched, even if we deleted it and didn't put it as a status. They have all this data, so they know exactly what we're doing. Now that's powerful, now that's real. That leads to extra purchases. That's why these websites like Facebook are now making billions of more dollars off of just the pure advertising because Facebook 
has everybody skewed. They know exactly who you are. They know what you're searching. They know that by data. It's not by polling. It's by you know studying your actions on that base. But as far as polling, where it's a question and answer, you know, in a study group or on a phone, or I, I hit this uh, this button when I deleted this app, I just find it to be very very misleading uh, in a, in a lot of ways. So I think a lot of companies use these type of polls to make decisions, and I think that's why as we see with this presidential election, a lot of the decisions they make are very naive and in many cases completely incorrect off of the fake polling that they did. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, figured I'd slow it down a little bit. Nothing too crazy. Just talk about polling. I have about three videos I really want to make this week. Um, I'll let you guys know I've been a little busy. I was at Politicon this weekend. Um, you know, I, I have a job too. People always say get a job hippie, but I actually have a full-time job. You know, I'm, I'm very uh, I'm very active when it comes to that. I do a lot of different things, so uh, I will get you guys three videos hopefully this week. And stay blessed, stay happy, stay positive, stay brave. Uh, I'm going to put my links below, and stay tuned. I'm going to be posting stuff. Thank you guys for the messages. Thank you guys for the comments. Thank you to everybody I saw this weekend at Politicon and that I met uh, on Monday. Uh, it's, it was really cool connecting with a lot of people in person and I plan to do that if you guys know any universities or colleges I'm working on getting to colleges to do question and answers and really expand stuff I'm working on a clothing company so if anybody has anything that you think you could contribute let me know just be brief and really to the point about it not to be mean I'm just so busy and I self manage myself so I don't have a manager so uh, trying to shuffle through all of the business stuff gets a little bit tricky so just just be real brief with me. Um, I'm going to be on a few radio shows and I think a TV show next week. They're having me on in San Francisco. Uh, I'll let you guys know when that happens, but I'll be, you know, busy. But I got some good new videos. Stay tuned. Thank you.